lead code session. Today we are solving prison cells after n days. And this is a very interesting problem. And the reason for that is it, it's kind of different from the usual problems that you solve on this website. And this problem is mostly asked on Amazon. So let's let's get into that. So I've been given a prison system and essentially you've been given cells and they're in the form of array and each cell is represented by this index and a value of zero indicates that that cell is empty a value of one indicates that that cell is occupied um, at the end of the day the occupancy of the cell is decided by the adjacent neighbors so if both of the neighbors of a cell are either occupied or vacant, then that cell becomes uh, occupied. So in simple words, if your neighbors are both zero or if your neighbors are both one, then you then that particular value is one at that index. So if you think about that, the first and the last value would never have both the neighbors. So you can, so they will always be zero uh, at the end of any day, right? So in the simplest, so whenever I try to solve any problem on lead code, the very first thing you should think about is the intuition. And it doesn't matter if your intuition, the problem you're solving and the solution you're getting through your intuition is suboptimal, but it is important to go through that process uh, and that will help you in a long run in achieving optimal solutions uh, for for future problems. So when you think about uh, in simplest word, how can you solve this problem? Uh, the idea would be I just keep computing the values uh, for each of the cells n times, and in the process I will have to create. I will need extra memory because uh, at every iteration, at the end of every day, that output becomes the input for the next iteration, right? So I would need a lot of space because n, the size of n is tremendous here, right? So how can we, uh, how can we think about optimization here? So one thing to note here is this array is of fixed length and the length is eight. Out of this eight length, you know that the first and the last values are always gonna be fixed. So that leaves you with six uh, indexes or indices. And what can be the possible combinations created by the six values? And the answer is two raised to the power six, right? Because each value, each index can have either a value of zero or one. So each index can have a value at most a value of two. Uh, and then you multiply that by, and you multiply that six times for every index and you get two raised to the power six. So what would happen after two raised to the power six iterations is this pattern would start to repeat itself. Because remember that n is tremendously large, right? So at some point of time, this pattern is bound to repeat. So if I tell you that you do have a pattern which is repeating itself, and I tell you what would be the line number at this particular line, you don't have to necessarily uh, iterate all the way through n. So in order to put into perspective, what I'm saying is, uh, let's forget about this problem for a while. And let's say if I tell you, you have been given a string. Uh, so at each line, you will have a string. Um, and then there's a dependency that if you have an A, then the next uh, string would be B. If you have a B in a, in a line, then the next line would have a C. And if you have a C, then the next line would be A, right? So you have like a repeating pattern like this. So if I tell you that, 
So if I ask you, okay, so what would be the string, let's say after 17 iterations? So do you, do you have to necessarily iterate through 17 iterations? No, definitely not. Because you see that there's a repeating pattern. And once you find that block size, that chunk, which, which is getting repeated, it's very easy to find uh, which line you will get. So first, what you do is you do realize that this block is of size three. And I've been asked uh, to find the value after 17 iterations. So how many blocks can be consumed would be 17 mod three, right? And that leaves you with two. So you, uh, so you know that in my block, uh, the value would be at position two and the answer would be C, right? If, if I ask you what is the value after 15 iterations, then 17, uh, 15 mod three would be zero and you know that <clears throat> the value would be A. So if you understand this concept, then you, you can, then you've got uh, almost 90% of the question. So coming back to the original problem we have, the first problem we need to identify is what is the block size? Where do I see a repeating pattern, right? At what point the repetition starts to begin, the repetition uh, is happening. And once I find that, I just need to iterate over the remaining, within my block, I need to iterate uh, within my block to find the exact value, right? So let's dive into that. And I think, uh, so I, I leave it here and let's start coding here. And I think it will become more clear once I start coding. Okay, so we do need some kind of set to store the, the array. Okay, and then if n is less than two raised to the power six, then you might not see a repetitive, repetitive pattern, right? I'm typing super slow today. All right, so first thing you wanna do is write a transformation function, which would give you a next day because we'll be doing it, um, we'll be doing it as long as, so we need that, so let's do that. And this will just transform into, so let's say, let's call it something else. Let's call it next day. And it would take the input array and return the response for the next day. And then I know that the first value is always gonna be zero, so I don't care about the first value. Same with the last. And then this would be, so if the, so if both the neighbors are equal, right? Then the result would be one. Otherwise it's initialized as zero, so we don't care. All right, so this is the transformation function which would take an input and then give you the result for the next day, right? So all I'm doing is just comparing the neighbors. And if if the neighbors are same, then you, you have the value of one as in that particular cell. Cool. So now 
so one thing that that is uh, important to understand is what goes into that set so you want to put the values in the set which are bound to repeat so in this case we had a b and c so you don't want to put a value input value into this set and the reason for that is uh, the input value is never going to repeat because if you look at the input here the initial state could be one but you know that once you start this repetition you would never reach you would never get a one again right so this would never be a part of that iterative pattern because you cannot get a one in the end or in the beginning so the first value that you want to put into the set is the value which has been transformed already so don't put the initial value into this set all right so let's call it the transformed value i don't know i am pretty bad with names uh, let's just call it next day or something and then next day and then this would have okay and then somehow we can transform this array into a string and the easiest way to do that is array start to string And then you want to check your set. And one more thing, you want to find the block size, right? So you need the size of your pattern, which is getting repeated. So if the set does not contain the string you add it to the set and you increment the size otherwise you have found the pattern and you want to have an indication that you found a pattern So I've solved this problem before. That's why I know things ahead. But if you try to solve it on your own, uh, I think uh, it will be easier for you to understand this. Okay, so what I'm doing here is um, I'm transforming the value and then I am converting that value in a string. So this entire input array becomes like a string and then if and then I'm checking in my set if that value exists. If it doesn't exist, then I add it to the set and I increase the size. And this size is the size of the block which is repeating, right? So for example, first you entered A and then B and then C, and then as soon as you found A, you know that the block size is three. So same thing we are doing over here. All right. So this seems good. And then in the end, you want to transform your input again. So this becomes the input for the next iteration. And this would be an answer if, if we do not break out of this loop, right? If, if the n is less than two raised to the power six, you would get your answer but if we do break out of this loop then we need to find at which level in our block um, so once you find how many blocks does it take and then you find within that block at which line uh, am i getting my result then n would become a mod size
and then you want to call this function and then you would return result. I'm sorry, this is cells. All right, so thank you for watching and I hope uh, you understand some part of it. I didn't do a very good job, I think, in explaining this, but I do hope that you understood the nuance of the problem. And at the same time, one thing I wanna point out is don't worry about the runtime, uh, com the runtime distribution so much. As long as the solutions you're writing is intuitive to you, and they are not they are not horrendous solutions it is acceptable 